Let's take a look at example four from the chapter three review. It is solve the quadratic inequality 2x squared is greater than 6 minus 11x. So in order to solve this, the first thing that you want to do is get 0 on one side. So in order to get 0 on one side, let me rewrite the inequality. I'm going to move everything to the left and put it in a sort of a standard form here. So when we move the negative 11x over, it comes over as positive 11x. Move the 6 over, it comes over as negative 6. So we get 2x squared plus 11x minus 6 is greater than 0. Number 2, uh, use equal to 0 to find the zeros. So I'm going to create a new equation here, just 2x squared plus 11x minus 6 is equal to 0. And then, of course, the next part to this would be to solve for x. Well, this one factors. So we get 2x and x, 6 and 1, a plus there and a minus here. And if you set each of these equal to 0, each of these factors equal to 0, you get x equals 1 half and x equals negative 6. Step 3 would be to use a sign chart. So we're going to set up a sign chart here, and I'll just draw it right here. And we're going to put these two x values on the sign chart in order. So negative 6 comes first, and then 1 half. These two numbers are where the polynomial is equal to 0. So I'm going to mark that with zeros on top of there. And my next step is to find out among each of these three intervals, the intervals here, here, and here, I need to figure out if those intervals are positives or negatives. We know that they have to be all one or the other among the interval itself, because the only place where an interval can change sign is where that interval, or where that function is equal to zero. Well, I've already found where the zeros are. So inside the interval here, it's either all positive or all negative. Inside this interval, it's either all positive or all negative. And inside this interval, it's either all positive or all negative. We just have to figure out which one it is. So that's where we bring in the test values. So we're going to pick test values that are in each of these intervals. So the first interval here is from negative infinity to negative 6. I choose negative 8. You can choose any number you want. Choose a number to test between negative 6 and 1 half. I choose 0. And choose a number to test between 1 half and infinity. I choose 1. All right. Let me do my testing right over here. And I'll do that in red. So if I test when x is equal to negative 8, you have to test it in the polynomial that is set up with the 0 on one side. If I go back here, you can see that that would be this polynomial here. It is true, however, that you can pick any version of that polynomial. And the version that I usually choose is the factored version makes things work out really nicely. So in fact, I'm going to use this uh, version here where it's already factored. So when I test negative 8, I get 2 times negative 8 minus 1 times negative 8 plus 6. We are not looking for the exact values here. All I really need to know is what the signs are. So the sign of this first one would be 2 times negative 8 minus 1 is a negative. 
and negative 8 plus 6 is also a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. So on the first interval, all of these values are positive. Next, I would check x equals 0. That would be 2 times 0 minus 1 times 0 plus 6. Again, I'm just looking for the sign. This first sign is negative. The second sign is positive. A negative times a positive is a negative. So every point on this middle interval is negative. And then lastly, if we check x equals 1, we get 2 times 1 minus 1 times 1 plus 6. That is equal to a positive times a positive, which is a positive. And this is the sign chart. So you'll be asked to compute the sign chart for certain things. Now to solve the question, the original question, we need to go back and see what was asked for. That comes from this first inequality statement where I rewrote it right here. We are looking for greater than zero. Greater than zero is positive. And it's only the positives. At this point, you need to check for might it be equal to zero. If it is, you include the points where it was equal to zero. If it's less than, you're looking for negatives, and then the other combinations as well. So we're looking for strictly positive. So the solution is negative infinity to negative six union one half to infinity. Thanks for watching.